Hello guys, today we'll be looking at what are called independent events. Now, to clarify this idea of independent events, we know it's normally a talk of females to claim that they're independent, which means that they're not reliant on males. Now, in that context, what does independence mean? Alright, it means that whatever they do is not dependent on the male character in their lives. So, we define independent events as events whose outcome doesn't affect each other. All right. So we say that two events are independent if the outcome of one does not affect the outcome of the other. Now let us look at these two events. A is the event that an odd number is obtained when a four-sided die is rolled once. And B is the event of obtaining tail when a coin is flipped once. Now let us look at combining these events. So let's say that on my die... It's a four-sided die, so I'm going to have numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. On my coin, I'm going to have head and tail. So we can list out all the possibilities here. We can have head with 1, head with 2. So let me just write them out. Head with 1, head with 2, head with 3, head with 4. We can also get a tail when a coin is flipped. One. So we can have a tail with one, a tail with two, a tail with three, and a tail with four. Now, notice that when I flip a coin, I will either get head or tail. When I roll a four-sided die, I would get numbers one to four. So what we are saying is that what happens on the coin will not affect what happens on the die. Now let us see what happens here. Now, A is the event that we get an odd number, and B is the event that we get a tail. So let us look at the probability of A and B. So we are looking for all the odd numbers that come with tail. So we have tail and 1, and we have tail and 3. And if you look at this, you notice we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 8 outcomes. All right? So there are 2 of these outcomes that have a tail with an odd number. So this would give me 2 out of 8. Now when I break that down, I'm going to end up with a quarter. Let us look at these events individually. A, the event that an odd number is obtained when a four-sided die is rolled once. Now, a four-sided die will have numbers labeled 1 to 4, and it will have two faces that are odd, which will be 1 and 3. So we can say the probability of a would be equal to 2 over 4 which breaks down to a half also event of obtaining a tail when a coin is flipped once a coin has two faces one which is head and one which is tail so we know that the probability of b is also equal to a half now bear in mind that when we wrote out the sample space for combining events a and b we had gotten a quarter now look at these two events the probability of A and B we found to be a quarter. The probability of A here is a half, and the probability of B is also a half. So how could I have obtained this probability, which is a quarter, without actually writing out the entire sample space? All right. We have a half and a half. So here we could say that the probability of A and B, because if I were to multiply a half by a half, I would actually get a quarter. So there we see that the probability of A and B is actually equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And this is a formula that we associate with independent events. Now, note that this formula can only be used on an event that we know that the events are independent, or the question tells us that these events are independent. So bear in mind that the probability of A and B was a quarter. So let's see what happens. The probability of A we found to be a half, and the probability of B we found also to be a half. So I'm going to have a quarter is equal to a quarter, which is true. So once two events are independent, the probability of A and B will always be the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B.